All right, David Harry here. Now, please ignore the mess on my table. What it is, I'm just in the middle of doing a whole bunch of testing to do with this M4 MacBook Air here. And I've just immediately come up against a bit of an issue, which I just thought I'm going to have to do a video about this immediately because it's definitely not something that I was expecting to be as bad as what it was or what it is. So what the problem is that I'm going to show you here is terrible write speeds once we get past its SLC cache. And on top of that, its write speed just isn't like major impressive in the first place either. And now what I'm doing here is to use a Thunderbolt 5 enclosure. So this is an Acasus uh, TB501. So this is the original TB501, not the Pro. And inside of it, I've just got a one terabyte Western Digital SN850X. Now the thing is, you know, this is complete overkill for a Thunderbolt 4 device. However, what this does is to give us our maximum read and write speed externally so this is a really good way of testing things such as internal storage and what have you anyway so what i've immediately come up with here is a huge problem to do with not just the slc cache but the tlc nand once like we start writing to it properly so let me dive into this and show you exactly what i mean okay so i'm on the desktop then for this m4 macbook air and the first thing that i will do is to go to the blackmagic disk speed test now i'm just going to test for the internal storage first so i'm selecting the home folder just going to open that i'll let that run a few times just so that we can get an idea of where we're up to now if you can hear any fan noise in the background that is my atomos ninja it is not the external ssd so as you can see here the write speed is around 2000 megabytes per second and the read speed is there about say 2900 now they will vary ever so slightly but that'll give us a good idea as to what the speed is like for the internal storage now if i just stop that and if i go to the external storage so there we go i'll just run a quick test on this now as we're going to see here this is over 3000 megabytes per second write and it's over 3000 megabytes per second read now once again they will vary ever so slightly if we just keep that disk test running and stuff but as you can see there the external drive is substantially faster for both read and write compared to the internal drive now that's really important just so that we know that the external ssd cannot be a bottleneck okay now what i'm going to do here is use this folder for the testing so if i just do get info here as we can see it is a hundred thousand megabytes in size so basically a hundred gigabytes now it has got a bunch of files and it. it's got like 99 files but that's not really gonna influence anything for this particular test so what i'm going to do here is just to launch activity monitor i will open up that external drive now there's a few few files on the external drive but they don't matter or anything now what i'm going to do here is to copy the 100 gig folder to the external now have a look down here at these write speeds and stuff now although these write speeds do look good you know these would be faster on a different mac as well if i put this on anything else we will see faster write speeds and what have you and indeed this disk is actually much faster when it's connected to another mac as well as far as its write speeds are concerned however you know no one's going to grumble at that speed there which is like what 2.2 2.3 gigabytes per second so that is actually really fast in fact it's that fast that the test is nearly run now okay so i'll just let that complete i won't speed this up okay there we go test is done now what i'm going to do now is to delete the folder from the desktop i'll empty the trash then we'll just quickly have a look at the information for the internal storage and as we can see although it says it's got a capacity of 245 we've still got over 200 gigabytes spare here now just consider what the blackmagic disk speed test was telling us with regard to the speeds so knowing that the external drive is way faster we should be able to hit that write speed at around two gigabytes per second now uh, that's two gigabytes per second write speed for the internal storage but watch this so 
I'll drag the folder back to the desktop. Now straight away we're going to see about 2 gigabytes per second, which is what we would expect to see. Now it's very quickly dropped to like 1.6 gigabytes per second. Now it may flip back up to about 2, um, but it's going to basically hang around 1.6, 1.7 for a while. But what's going to happen shortly is that we are going to see this plummet and it's just going to go really low at points as well so i'll let this run through until it does that just so that you can see exactly what this problem is and once again this is because of the slc cache so this is definitely a real world scenario that a bunch of people will probably find themselves in and there we go it's dropped right down now look at that so it went down to about 300 meg there we go under 300 megabytes per second there 176 megabytes now at this point 44 megabytes per second at this point the drive is obviously struggling with its tlc nand so this is going to be indicative of the speeds that you should expect eight megabytes per second <laughs> this is now indicative of the actual write speeds that you should expect from the internal storage at 256 gigabytes and i would suggest that's going to be for any m4 mac once you have depleted its slc cache now i can't tell what the size of the slc is but as we can see here once it's gone the drive performance is absolutely terrible now i don't know whether i should let this carry on running through because Although it looks like it's only got a little bit more to write, it's taken forever to do now because of these speeds. Look at that, 5.9 megabytes per second. I mean, at this point, we're just about breaking over 400 megabytes per second at certain points. But then we go right the way down to like, you know, below 10 megabytes. There we go, 10 megabytes there. So as we can clearly see, the drive is massively struggling now. And just to be clear, this is the 256 gigabyte version of the internal storage. Okay, I'll leave it at that. I think you can definitely see exactly what's gone wrong there so let me just jump to an end summary okay so as we could clearly see there then those write speeds were absolutely horrendous now i don't care about what other people might want to say about these things such as the apple fanboys out there who are going to want to make massive excuses for this thing such as you know well who wants to write that kind of data on it well the simple fact is here is that if you're doing anything to do with video editing or maybe even photos and stuff you're going to be doing a lot of disk swapping with only 256 gigs of internal storage so it's likely that you're going to hit these problems very quickly now maybe you're not going to do a 100 gig folder in one go but that slc cache ran out way before 100 gigs was done anyway it was somewhere in the region of i think 50 gig or 60 gig maybe but don't forget that once that run out we were seeing the true performance of the tlc nand which is on well which is inside the ssd for this particular mac here and once we did hit that it was absolutely terrible absolutely terrible now the other thing as well you know people go well these are like you know cheap max well the cheap max you know but max are not cheap in the first place but it is not cheap as far as like a laptop is concerned and we definitely should be expecting better results than these with like the internal storage as far as i'm concerned the internal storage at 256 is absolutely terrible and that 256 storage is indeed the type of like storage where people are definitely going to be using external storage and stuff like that now another thing or another problem to do with this is there's no point in having super fast SSDs where the SSD is going to be completely crippled because of the internal storage of the Mac. Now, what that will mean is that for something like one of these, like, you know, low kind of capacity M4s, you're probably just best off using a USB-C SSD. And I've already done a test as well <laughs> with one of these. Now, this is an X31 by SK Hynix, which is a fantastic tiny little SSD, which is really 
suitable for something like you know one of these little m4 macbooks and stuff now look at the size of that that's the kind of thing you could have in your pocket easily to like you know lash into this where and wherever you are and this is a two terabyte one so my first video was going to be you know a small cute ssd for a small cute laptop well what happened was i did the test phase with this and immediately noticed the problem and i'm going what's that about and just to double check it i had to put this into me m4 max macbook just to make sure it wasn't the ssd and it most certainly wasn't the ssd now here's the thing though this is only usb-c and even this is actually too much for the storage that's inside here so the problem that we're going to face is that if you do want to have say large external ssds as in large capacity maybe two terabytes or something like that you are going to be getting way slower write speeds and read speeds and what have you than what you would do if you attach the same ssd to a higher performing mac so like i say the nutshell here is it's going to be really difficult to recommend things like thunderbolt 40 even for something like this because if you can't write the data back into the actual internal storage as fast as what you should be able to what is the point of spending all that money on a really good enclosure when in fact a USB-C external drive is actually going to be faster than what the internal storage is once it is run out of its SLC and then it is relying on the TLC for its performance. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of things that I've got to think about here. Now I'm not saying that I'm sending it back because I'm not going to because there's other things that it's going to be great for and what have you. However, these things to do with the SSD speeds are definitely things that people need to know about. Anyways, I will leave it at that but there will be a whole bunch of videos coming up to do with this little tiny macbook even though there are issues with it immediately with its internal storage if you've liked the video please do give us a thumbs up a sub to the channel would be absolutely awesome i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now